Hello there. Thanks for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and biggest show of stars indeed. Holy cats. This is the first, the first biggest show of stars poster from 1957. I'll refer to it as BSOS going forward, initials. Um, but uh, what a beauty it is, isn't it? Boy, just spring of 1957 from Spokane, Washington. Now, the biggest show of stars or um, series of concerts ran for about 10 years from 1956 to 1965 with two or three or four beautiful you know posters probably beautiful concerts too a year but um, this is spring 57 It's the first one called biggest show of stars in 1956 they had different names like biggest in-person show and things like that in fact even the name of the national promoter changed a little bit this is super attractions and they were also known alternately as like supersonic attractions and super enterprises but um, one thing they had in common, they always featured a combination of rhythm and blues and rock and roll and did it extremely effectively. And another thing they did is they always used beautiful layouts like this, from globe, usually from Globe posters of Baltimore. I would probably say all the time. Um, just creating gorgeous posters that, ironically and funnily enough, were meant to be thrown away after the concert, but now we cover them, of course, as collectors. So, um, and they always had different, you know, different <clears throat> sort of layouts and different colors, but this, again, the first biggest show of stars, has one of the very prettiest. Look at that. A quick top to the bottom. I just love these, this um, combination of pinks and yellows and robin's egg blue, and then that's accentuated with blacks and, of course, the white cardboard, and then the deep blue ink up there in the venue information gave you, like, you know, up to half a, half a dozen different color elements. And uh, this is, uh, you know, cardboard window card. Uh, totally original, obviously, like everything I shoot. And uh, Globe would make these in two sizes, the Jumbo 22 by 28, and then uh, the more common one, this one, the 17 by 23 inch window card. Um, interestingly, this particular one was an entirely black cast. Usually there was a mixture, or quite often a mixture. And six members of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame on this tour, just amazing, referring, of course, to Fats Domino, Laverne Baker, Clyde McFadder, Chuck Berry, the Moonglows, and Charles Brown. Now, since this is an all-black cast, let's uh, let's look at the R&B charts for a moment. The Billboard magazine's R&B charts, pop, of course, being mainstream, R&B being the black audience. And can you imagine how many top 20 R&B hits these artists had combined on this poster? It's kind of a, it's kind of mind-boggling to think of it. If you think of six Hall of Famers and everything, I mean, 50 or, or 75. These are top 20 now. That's a, a, a real success. Um, how about a hundred? Do you think that they could put together a hundred top 20 R&B hits? Well, I'm teasing, of course. The answer is 143. <laughs> the artists on this poster in their careers combined on the top 20 of Billboard's R&B chart for 143 hits. That is just amazing and astonishing. So this is a tour blank, of course. Um, that means it was used, uh, you know, for date after date with just the top venue information changed from city to city, and it was used for over two months. In fact, um, I often like to do this. Here's the uh, exact same poster, but from a different different city. There's Buffalo, New York, and uh, the date on that is February 19th, okay? And then uh, I'll show you the handbill version, which is small in paper, and they would put the venue and ticket price information and everything on the bottom of the handbills. So there it is down there, and that's from April 14th in Hartford, Connecticut. So this one is from Spokane, Washington, up in the Pacific Northwest on March 3rd. And um, usually all this venue information was printed in the same blue block lettering. Not always, though, but usually. So that gives them sort of a sense of consistency along, of course, with the body of the poster. So we have for this one, I'll come in a little bit on the venue information, the unique uh, part of this poster. And you've got Sunday, March 3rd at 7.30 p.m. The year is usually not given, but of course it's also given right here, 457. So that's <laughs> easy for us to you know, refer to in hindsight. And interestingly, under the date, see those ticket locations there? Um, interesting, it says the Desert Hotel and Jacoy. And Jacoy turns out to be quite an abbreviation for P.M. Jacoy's newsstand and cigar shop, which went back to the 1800s. And then, interestingly, a plug for the local disc jockey on this poster under ticket info. And we have to remember that back in the mid-50s, um, very few radio stations would necessarily have the same format 24-7, especially contemporary music stations. 
Um, so they would have blocks of programming, like blocks of R&B or a special DJ do just rock and roll and so forth. And so that's why Gene Lawson specifically probably was um, mentioned, because especially in the Pacific Northwest, it was probably block programming for the, the new you know, R&B and rock and roll coming along. So, the musicians on this poster, my goodness, they are the star after all, where there's Fats Domino in the pole position in the pink oval. That just looks so great, doesn't it? And um, interestingly, there's no songs by Fats. You know, most of the other artists on here have songs, and he certainly wasn't lacking for hit records, that's for sure. In fact, at the time of this show, March 4th of 57, Fats had four records in the Billboard magazine Top 100 pop charts, not just R&B, um, and that included Blue Monday in this week's Top 10. So Fats was certainly on fire, but for some reason they chose not to put any song titles by his name. Maybe because he churned them out so fast that, you know, you put it on the poster and before you know it, a new one has replaced it. And he shares co-billing there with Bill Doggett in the Blue Oval, as you can see, Mr. Honky Tonk, and that record was a number one record for three months which was enough uh, by itself to give him co-headlining status with Fats Domino. Notice underneath Doggett's name there it says Crying Tommy Brown. He was sort of a journeyman R&B singer and he uh, did lay claim, he filed claim to have having co-written Honky Tonk, which was an instrumental. And then, uh, let's see, we've got Laverne Baker there in blue in the star. That's really a nice, uh, nice one of her. Absolutely perfect timing for her career because uh, Jim Dandy is on the poster. It was her current hit and her only number one record and the one that she is known most for. In the middle there in the black oval is Clyde McFadder with Without Love. That was a top five R&B record and a lot of baby boomers know it from Tom Jones having a smash with it about 10 or 12 years later. Then you've got the five keys there in pink with yellow lettering, and they were past their prime, but they were best known for The Glory of Love, which was quite, is quite an anthem from the 50s. Then over there with pink lettering, I'm going to switch it over here, we've got the five satins, and uh, they're best known for their huge record in the still of the night the year before in 1956. Then there's Chuck Berry. Oh my goodness, look at that. I don't know. He, he, to me, he carries the poster. I guess a lot of baby boomers and rock and roll fans would feel that way. Just look at him. He just looks great. His name is in pink with a couple of great different fonts there. And of course, the classic, classic song title, Roll Over Beethoven. Holy cow, what can you say? Then you've got uh, the schoolboys, just kind of briefly mentioned there. They were a vocal group out of Harlem. And then Eddie Cooley and the Dimples with Priscilla, but interestingly, even though there's a song title on there, Eddie Cooley is the only act on this entire poster that never charted a record anywhere on a national basis on Billboard, so that's a bit unfortunate. Over on the other side there, we've got Ann Cole. Check her out, heading the star there. She's best known for originating the song Got My Mojo Workin', which is quite often attributed mistakenly to Muddy Waters, but Ann Cole was the first one to do it. Then in the middle down there at the bottom, <laughs> here I am peeking around, the Moon Glows, of course, Rock and Roll Hall of Famers, Harvey, Harvey Fuqua and company, and they were in the middle of having seven straight top 20 R&B hits. And then the last name on the poster there, down in the corner, is Charles Brown. He's got his picture and a star, so that's nice, but he's way down in the corner, way down there, so he must have not done much, right, figure chart-wise. Well, as a matter of fact, he had the biggest chart action of any of these artists. In fact, uh, Trouble Blues by Charles Brown was number one for 15 weeks. That's so long in the R&B charts. And Black Knight was number one for 14 weeks. So, wow, that's, that's huge for Charles Brown, but they came much, much earlier. 57 was getting on in his career. And how about in that black stripe on the bottom, Paul Williams and his great orchestra? Well, Paul Williams had a record, Hucklebuck, as you probably know, that was number one for 14 weeks. And so, <laughs> I guess the secret to having, you know, these huge, gigantic, evergreen R&B hits on the charts in the number one position forever is to be at the bottom of a poster. And then finally, I just love, this is the, you know, the only time I can remember this happening. I just love this Globe Poster Baltimore credit. If I come in right down there at the very bottom, they printed it in pink. Isn't that cool? I just think that's such a nice touch. That's a nice touch on an extremely nice poster. Just a great one from the 50s. I just love this. The biggest show of stars for 57 Spring Edition, and they'd go for another nine years with all kinds of glorious, great posters, but this might just be my favorite one. You just can't beat this pink, yellow, and robin's egg blue. It's just so nice. Hope you agree. Hope you enjoyed the poster today, and thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.